What's up everybody, I'm Eric Hansen with Backpacking TV and today I am going to be taking you on one of the best treks in the whole world. I am here in Huascaran National Park in Peru in the Cordillera Blancas. It is simply incredible, incredible, incredible. Uh, and back behind me is Huascaran, the tallest peak in Peru. And over the next four days, I'm gonna be actually trekking in this mountain range just to the south of us, that's the Cordillera Huaywash. Now this is something that I've been wanting to do for a really, really long time. And if you've ever wanted to do a international trek, but uh, feel like you're really intimidated by it, well, I'm gonna be bringing you along and also offering some helpful tips for you so that you can go on an international trek and know what you're doing and uh, not feel completely overwhelmed with it. Okay, uh, let's get into it. Let's go trek the Cordillera Huaywash. Okay, there might be some of you out there that actually know that the Cordillera Huaywash is different than the Cordillera Blancas. And I'm here in the Cordillera Blancas to just get some acclimatization in. So we can we could actually drive up to about 15,000 feet. And uh, so I'm just here today with our crew. We're filming an Epic Trails episode out here and I, so I'm just kind of double, doing the double job here. Um, but what I'm doing here today is I'm really just trying to walk around at about 15,000 feet not doing anything too strenuous. And uh, that's super important because if you're coming from a low elevation and trying to come up and do a trek like this, uh, you're just gonna feel wiped out, maybe even get altitude sickness, and uh, that can be no joke. True story, uh, I told this in another video, but this was the area that I did another trek with a group of people that had come from sea level and uh, they all got sick and we had to delay our trip by about two days because of everybody's altitude sickness. So do yourself a favor and uh, acclimatize. Okay, the next part of this trip, uh, we're actually going to the Cordillera Huaywash, which is about five hours south of here. The place is mind blowing, you're gonna love it. Make sure you stick around for this video because this is gonna be the best one I've ever made. Boom. So we're just about to leave Huaraz and drive five hours south of here, south of the city, into the Cordillera Huaywash. It's gonna be an incredible trek and uh, it's really helpful to have a team of people. So we are trekking with a guide and an arriero, which is a horse master or a donkey master and a cook. So this is slightly different from a typical backpacking trip. Uh, a little bit more logistics involved, but uh, it means it's gonna be mwah, so, so much more fun. behind me is the first glimpse that we have at the Cordillera Huaywash. It is a spectacular mountain range and I'm super excited to be going trekking in there. So uh, we've got a few more hours to go uh, before we're gonna really be in it uh, and camping for the night. We got about another four hours of driving, uh, but man, I am psyched about this. made it to the official beginning point of our trek. We got some of the crew down there. The van is back there that had just dropped us off and uh, the van's gonna take off. And from here, what we're gonna be doing, what we're gonna be doing is going up and over that pass there starting tomorrow. So today's still kind of an acclimatization day. As I'm literally still catching my breath because we're over 13,000 feet here. So I am super excited for what's coming ahead. Uh, but yeah, so I've got my camp set up and uh, I'll be walking you through what I've actually, what I'm taking with me on this trek. But first, uh, we got lunch, which, sorry, I'm still, no, I'm still just catching my breath here. We're high. I mean, well, we, we are high, not that kind of high. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so the beauty of a fully supported trip We've got donkeys, we've got horses, we've got a team of people, we've got a cook, uh, we've got a guy that's just in charge of the donkeys and the horses, and then we have our guide Virgilio. So it's pretty amazing setup here. This is different. Trekking in a country like Peru is different than just backpacking at home. And uh, mostly that has to do with how much support you get. Uh, and there is a huge amount of support that goes into trekking uh, in a foreign country like Peru. 
Uh, so it's pretty full service and it's awesome and I love it. And if you haven't done it, I highly recommend trying to take a, a trek in a foreign country where somebody else is guiding you. Mm -hmm. Okay, look at what we got going on here. This yeah, is what makes this full here. service trek. So, this is our cook. His name is Chileno and he is Chilean. Amigos! Pour it in my mouth now? Yeah, just pour it in. There you go. Well, that one's yours now. <laughs> Chicken noodle soup with real chicken. The soup was just uh, course one. Now we have yeah. quinoa chifa. Four thumbs up. Four thumbs up. Five. Oh, wow. Jeez. We just went for a big mission here to get acclimatized. We, we just summited that guy, which I don't know if you can tell. It is a solid 1,500 feet higher than here. And uh, that was... A good effort and I was super excited to get footage of it and realized I left my GoPro in base camp. I'm feeling ready. I think that was a good prep. I actually did pretty good uh, in general and so I'm feeling like the trek ahead is gonna be it's definitely gonna be hard but I'm encouraged at my acclimatization. I think I'm ready. Let's go get it tomorrow. Woo! That's pretty awesome. The light kind of disappeared for a little bit, and now it's back with a vengeance. It looks amazing. Well, a satisfying night of sleep last night. Uh, I got nine, 10 hours of sleep, so that's more than I've gotten the whole time I've been in Peru, so pretty awesome feeling. Uh, beautiful, beautiful night last night. The clouds were kind of covering up my time lapses, which I'm kind of bummed about. Uh, but beautiful morning. The light is just touching Rondoy and Nikishaka. Uh, so I think it's going to be a great day. We've got a huge pass to get up and over. Actually, I think it's the biggest one of the trek for us. Um, so that'll be today starting us right off uh, but man the camp has been great and uh, very excited about it but I've got the uh, Big Agnes copper spur that has become uh, pretty much my go-to tent uh, I have just really really enjoyed it mainly because of the doorways here having the ability to have this big access point here has been so so good I got kind of a mess going on in here but I thought I wanted to talk a little bit about my setup I'm testing out this new Rab Neutrino 600 bag. Uh, if, for those of you who aren't familiar with Rab, they make really good um, clothing and sleeping bags. And they do also make some high alpine kind of emergency shelters or mountaineering tents. Um, they sent me their Neutrino 600, which is an 800 uh, hydrophobic fill down. So it's a really high quality sleeping bag. Um, I think it retails for like five hundred dollars, uh, five hundred and sixty dollars. I think I need to check on that because I could be totally wrong. Um, but <clears throat> it's a ten degree Fahrenheit sleeping bag, so it is a little bit warmer than your typical three season sleeping bag. Um, so what I do like to be able to see is stuff like the extreme, the limit of comfort, and the comfort range. So the extreme being negative 32 or negative 26 Fahrenheit, that just means it's going to keep you alive, uh, but you will not be sleeping well. Uh, limit of comfort means that, uh, well, that's at the point where you will be sleeping well, um, uh, continuing to be able to sleep, but it's at the, it's at the borderline. So this year at a 10 degree Fahrenheit bag, uh, that's just a little bit warmer than your typical bag, and uh, I've been really, really pleased with it. And uh, then at 23 degrees Fahrenheit is your comfort. So still below freezing. Typically on a 15 degree bag, you'll see the comfort rating actually be like closer to 32. Um, and then there's just a couple of things I really like about it. This hood is really awesome. It comes with this draft collar that's really nice. A lot of three season bags don't have a good draft collar built in. They might have something there, but not a very adequate draft collar. So you can actually, you can see I've kind of been slept with this cinched up a bit. So what the draft collar does is it will keep the air from escaping out my hood uh, as I sleep. So it keeps that bag nice and warm and I just really like this hood. 
Um, I love the texture and feel of the bag. It feels really good. My one downside is that I can't connect it to my sleeping pad here. Uh, so I'm just kind of free floating on top of the bag. Um, so that to me is kind of a downside. I don't like to be squirreling around so much on the top of my sleeping pad. That's kind of the only knock I have on the bag. Um, and then I've got my tried and true trusty Big Agnes Q-Core SLX. It's a super bomber, wonderful sleeping mat, uh, sleeping pad, sleeping mattress. <clears throat> we'll get there. And uh, super, super comfortable. And as you can see, I've got I'm get, trekking with my uh, Mr. Ranch Br Bridger 65. Nice bag, love it. Um, I've got camera equipment in here. These pack stacks uh, from Hill Sound have been money for me, so I can organize clothes and they're waterproof in case we get some rain. Um, Zolio for communicating with my loved ones. Uh, camera gear, Rapid Pure for filtering water as we go here and a uh, few odds and ends. So that's been my camp set up for me. I'm carrying most of this stuff, uh, but we do have access to donkeys and horses, uh, which means that I don't have to carry water or much water. I'm carrying about a liter of water. Uh, I don't have to carry my food because we have a whole chef that's taking care of everything. And, uh, and then I'll throw in the tent onto the horse as well. Everything else I'm gonna carry myself. Uh, up and over the pass, but uh, the beauty of trekking is that you don't necessarily have to carry everything. You can get a lot of support if you want. You could carry nothing. You could carry just a little day pack with some snacks and uh, with some snacks and a water and a camera, and that's it. There goes Rosalino. Un gaucho. Progress is always slow when we're coming up. With these passes but man it's so satisfying being out there we got we got such great weather yesterday there were torrential downpours today we've got sunny skies so i'm pretty happy with that everybody's feeling good including me these guys are the strongest hikers in the andes that's that's jim right there Steve, Bill, Dwight. Oh, well, we're making some progress. We stopped for a snack break. What's your snack? Max decides that he doesn't want his passion fruit. <laughs> uh, so we've got Rondoy. This is the closest peak here. And just coming out behind us there, by her behind the Rondoy, is Yerupuja. That's it, right? Yerupaja. Yerupaja. Is that the tallest one? Yes, it is. Tallest peak in the Cordillera Huaywash, second tallest in all of Peru. We've made the high pass, 15,300 feet. Uh, we came from way down there and uh, we got some guys that have, uh, we lost a few soldiers. So we just came over the second pass, slightly lower than the higher one, but this one has the best views. Oh my goodness. There's only a few places I've ever been that make me feel like I'm going to fall over because of the beauty. Right now, I'm at one of them. I mean, this lake, those peaks, the avalanches that are coming down. Oh, it's just not fair. This feels like one of the craziest places I've ever been. So where we're getting to camp tonight is truly amazing. I feel so lucky. This trek has already been stunning. Uh, we come open over that pass and then made our way down this valley. And uh, tomorrow we're going up that way. So uh, yeah, the trek has been insane. Um, one thing that I would note for anybody who's looking to do a trek, I do think I personally would want to bring my own gear. I did bring my own gear this time. And I just like having, you know, stuff that I'm familiar with, of course. But if you don't want to bring your own gear, you can certainly rent gear when you're in the location. So this tent, for example, is provided by the trekking company. Um, this cameraman is provided by the trekking company. If Look, you can see this in there. Bag, this thermal and this thing kept me warm. 
like. Yeah, so that's all it. provided by the trekking company. Yeah. So pretty easy if you don't wanna if you don't wanna haul your gear halfway around the world, it's pretty easy. Hey, I left that open. You might want to close that, you know, for privacy and bugs and all that. Sorry. Don't worry. Don't worry. You got this. You're, you're good. You're good. Um, but yeah, because why would you not want to come to Peru or some rad country and do something like this? Can't think of any reasons. Also, you get cute puppies when you go trekking. Oh, oh my goodness. Are you cold? You're not cold, are you? No, it's okay. I'm friendly. Also, practically every time you stop, you get food. So we've got ourselves some popcorn, coffee, tea. Here's our delicious dinner. You saw it cooking. Ooh. Oh, where's yours? It's coming. Oh, okay. Thank you. Rosalino. Rosalino, muchas gracias. <laughs> We left base camp this morning, well, actually this afternoon after a big Pachamanca. And uh, you can see it way down there, spectacular lakes behind us. And we are at uh, Virgilio's most favorite viewpoint in the Cordillera Huaywash. So we've got just spectacular views. We're gonna be watching sunset from this spot and then uh, making our way back down to camp. It's already been so worth the effort of getting up here. I mean, holy cow, look at this place. So it's our last morning here. We just woke up. I just woke up and uh, we've got a ton of frost on the tent. It was a cold night last night. Probably got down to about maybe 25 degrees, uh, but it's also a very damp, humid 25. Well, we're setting off from camp for our last day. We're gonna make it back to the village of Pokpa and uh, this'll be it. But we're leaving behind our amazing campsite here that has been our home for the last two nights. We've had a few other nights elsewhere in the mountains that have been truly staggering. So be sad to see this place go. It has been so, so beautiful. I mean, come on, so good. So the Cordillera Huaywash is a spectacular mountain range. I highly recommend anybody who's interested in coming out for a trek here. Uh, the team here uh, has just been fantastic. Everybody is so fun and making it really an amazing experience for us all. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up and be subscribed here on Backpacking TV. If you're curious about trekking or any, have any other questions, please hit me up in the comments below. I'd love to help you out and uh, get you guys out there, out in the world, exploring this wonderful world we have in the mountains and deserts and all the landscapes that are worth exploring. Uh, I'm Eric Hansen. I'm gonna go hike through the Cordier Huaywash. See you later, everybody.